So trellis coded modulation starts with one data bit which is not coded. No coding. <laughs> and this is where we're associating this bit, which will not get any protection, will not get any error correcting, correction going on it. We're going to associate this particular bit with the distant symbols. So we saw that uh, here in our PC, um, in our 8 PAM um, example. Uh, with the bit allocation that we saw here. And the minus 1 and the 7 are very far apart. They have a distance of 8. And all these pairs, which are at a distance of 8 from one another, there's only the first bit is going to be the bit which is not going to be coded. Okay, So these two, the, I'm telling them apart just by one bit, but they're so far apart, I'm very confident that this bit is going to be well protected without any error correction added to it. So notice here that this 4, that's that 1 here in the first bit, the 0 in the, second, in the first bit. Here again in this group, one of them becomes the 1 in the first bit, even though the second and third bits are the same here, the first bits are different. And that's true for each one of them. So this is where I'm showing the bit that is not coded. It's that bit. So the other two bits are going to be the result of a convolutional code. Here, there's two outputs. I'm going to output two bits. Those are the two bits that are the remaining two bits in the 8PAM. So in, I've got two real data bits. And at the output, it's like I have a sequence of three bits, so I have a different symbol. So let's start here. Let's start answering this question. So what's the constraint length of the code that I'm using in this example? And the constraint length, well, we can see it here. There's three shift registers, one the input register, and then the other two, which are the memory, the state of the encoder. So constraint length is three for this example that I'll be showing you. There's two bits in the message. There's two bits that enter. And how many bits come out? Well, we get three bits coming out one of them with coding protection, uh, without coding protection, and the other two are the result of an encoding signal. So we would call this a rate 2 over 3 uh, code, because I go from 2 to 3. Of course, this encoder I can always define with the uh, vector, the generating vector for each one of the code bits. For instance, uh, this code bit comes from uh, doing the binary addition of all of the register entries. And uh, the second coded bit comes from taking the first and the third register and doing the uh, binary sum. So we saw already the trellis that is associated with this convolutional encoder. And this is the trellis. Of course, you know, it's constraint length equal 3. And for a constraint length equal to 3, we know that the number of states, 2 to the k minus 1, so there are four states. And so here we see the four states for this encoder. And our signs are 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. And because it's a finite state machine, I'm shifting things over. There's only uh, two transitions which are possible. Uh, again, this is the 0 transition for solid. The dotted line is the one transition. So if the next bit input was a 0, I'd stay at state A. If the next bit input was a 1, I'd transfer to state B, etc. So the valid transitions are just decided by uh, this register chunking through. And then what is the output? What's written here is the output of this encoder. So it's these operations of uh, binary addition that determine what are the two uh, code bits that come out of this. And of course, if I'm at 0, 0 is the state, and I input a 0, then what am I going to get out as a code word? I'm going to get out as a code word 0, 0, because I'm adding up a bunch of zeros getting 0. So you know we've done this already. This is how you build the trellis based on this implementation, the shift register implementation. 
So I have this, and it's written the bit sequences, which are here. So what changes with trellis coded modulation? So in trellis coded modulation, I don't have just this encoder. <laughs> I also have this uh, input bit, which has no coding at all. And I have to somehow take account of that in this trellis. And so what I do is I have another kind, uh, I, I do a, another version of this trellis. And in the second version of the trellis, each one of the transitions now has what I call a double rail. So instead of being a single rail, where I say it's a zero, uh, here there's two possible transitions. And it depends on what was this input bit that was encoded. So for instance, it could have been a zero or it could have been a one. Whatever it is, it's still state A. <laughs> so it's state A um, that I go from A to A. That transition is A to A. And it's just this uncoded bit that means that I have two things that could have happened on that same transition from A to A. So each one of the transitions in the trellis has two possible values, two possible bit sequences which apply to it. For instance, the bit sequence 000, or the bit sequence 100, they would both rep be represented by the same transition in the trellis, because that first bit is not coded. So it's not constrained to only have certain transitions which are valid. You know, it could have been 0, could have been 1. The re registers, the, ge the calculation of the coding bit, completely independent of that. So there's always two possibilities for one transition. So that's why in this TCM uh, encoder, I have a double rail, whereas in the convolutional encoder, um, there's just the single. So now we go back to what we saw as that sequence, which was assigned to each one of uh, the symbols in this 8PAM uh, example. And so we'll take this 8PAM example and we'll apply it to the trellis coded modulation with that convolutional encoder that I just showed you. So that means that each one of those transitions, which has three bits on it, a sequence, that means that there's a certain coefficient in the I plane that is associated with that sequence. Whenever I see the sequence 0, 0, 0, I know that I'm going to be transmitting amplitude 7. When I have the sequence 0, 1, 1, I'm going to be transmitting the amplitude 3. So each one of these sequences has associated with them uh, the coordinates in the IQ plane. In this case, just I. We're going to choose an example where the numbers are easier to see what's going on. So for instance, if I look at the uh, convolutional code, which state I am in is determined by which of these sets that I fall in. So for instance, C0, the set and the set partitioning. So I had four sets at the bottom of my set partitioning. The first one, C0, I assign that uh, to state A. And of course, the next set I assign, uh, in this case, to set D. The next one, set B. And the last one, set C. And it's all determined by the names that I gave to those sequences. So this is 1, 1. 1, 0, and that, that was the name of the state was uh, D, uh, B, and C. But of course, there's a double rail, and that's where uh, now I can see where the parallel pairs um, were being uh, chosen. Uh, here I call them parallel pairs, I'm not sure why. But here, these pairs here, why were they chosen the way they were? Well, one characteristic is the distance between them. So the coordinates of 0, 0, that was amplitude 7. For the sequence 1, 0, 0, that was amplitude minus 1. And if I look at the distance between minus 1 and 7, that's a distance of 8. <coughs> and that is true for each one of these pairs at the bottom of the set partitioning. So that means, for instance, let's look here. Here are the coordinates um, in the I plane and the uh, bit sequence associated with each one of those coordinates. And we can see that the this example of 7 and minus 1, 
7 and minus 1, they apply to the rail for state A, because that's a state with 0, 0 and the other two bits. And uh, so if I want to write uh, the decoder, or even the encoder, the encoder, let's start with the encoder, that's the sequence that comes out, but now I'm also doing modulation. So in the convolutional encoder, that was the last step. I have here the code that comes out. But in trellis coded modulation, I have to say, oh, it's that code, zero, zero, three zeros? Well, that's coordinate seven. That's the symbol that I'm going to send. That's my modulation. So I'm going to write that into my encoder. And of course, uh, I'll, I could just go through um, the sequence here. And on this rail, um, for this transition, I'm in uh, state um, C, which is, uh, sorry, not state C. Uh, those are co uh, code words, 011 and 111. These are the code words here, and those code words are on the transition from C to A. Um, and then I would, you know, look up and say, well, every time I see 111 here, I should really put in minus 5, because that's the symbol that I'm going to transmit, is the coordinate minus 5. So each one of these sequences has corresponding to it a certain amplitude, and I could rewrite this uh, encoding trellis with those coordinates.